Hello everyone, welcome to Allen Digital and today we are going to look at how we can use binomial theorem in remainder problems. Now you must have encountered problems where something to the power something is divided by another number and you are asked to find out the remainder of that. So like, like in this case, 7 to the power 12 is divided by 47 and we are supposed to find out the remainder of that. The idea is that you need to find out a power of 7 which is the closest multiple of 47. In this case, it's going to be 49, right? And then we are going to use that 49 as 47 plus 2, expand it using binomial theorem and see what remainder comes out. So, okay, uh, we have the binomial theorem. I'm going to write 7 to the power 12 can be written as 49 to the power 6, right? 49 to the power 6. And I'm going to expand it like this, right? Using the binomial theorem. Now look, the first term has 47 power 6, power 5, power 4, and so on till here. So all of these terms, except for the very last term, which does not have a power of 47, will be divisible by 47 because this can be written as some 47 key. So this whole thing is divisible by 47. And this is your remainder. Okay, but see, 66 is just going to be 1, 47 power 0 again 1, and then 2 power 6. You need to see what remainder you'll get when you'll divide 2 power 6 by 47. So 2 power 6 is just 64 divided by 47. Uh, so 64 minus 47, it's going to give you remainder equals to 17, right? You'll get the remainder 17. Now the thing is, do we need to expand every time if we know that it's only the last term which is going to give you the remainder we don't have to expand it all the time we just can take out the last term use it to find out the remainder all right so let's see how we can use that now we need to find out the remainder when 3 power 99 is divided by 5 3 power 99 can be written as uh, 3 cube power 33. So I'm looking for 27 power 33 divided by 5, which can be written as 25 plus 2 power 33 divided by 5. Now, this will get, see, 25 is divisible by 5. So we are good. This can be converted to 2 power 33 divided by 5, now you'll have to deal with 2 power 33. For 2 power 33, uh, I can think of 16, because 16 can be written as 15 plus 1, right? But for that, I'll have to write it as 2 into 2 to the power 32 divided by 5, which is 2 into 16 power 8 divided by 5, which I'm going to write it as 2 into 15 plus 1, whole power 8, divided by 5, and that is going to give me 2. 15 is divisible by 5, that gives you 1 to the power 8, divided by 5, and you get the remainder is equal to 2. But can we make this even more simpler? Let's see. There is something called negative remainder. Huh. Negative remainder you can think of as... Uh, something which comes out of over-ambitious division. Like, let's say, I'm dividing 66 by 7. Hmm. So, 7 times 9 is 63. Okay. And the remainder is 3. So, we are good. But then I got over-ambitious, and while dividing 66 by 7, I divide it 10 times. So, that is 70. The remainder that you get is minus 4. Now this minus 4, this minus 4 is equivalent to 7 minus 4, which is 3. Okay, because you got the remainder, the actual remainder was 3 there, right? So this is the concept of negative remainder. Now remember the previous problem, we were trying to find out the remainder of 3 to the power 99 to be divided by 5. This can be done in even a simpler way. Look, I can write it as 3 times 3 power 98 
divided by 5. I am thinking of 9 here. I can write it as 3. 9 to the power 49 divided by 5, which can be written as 3 into 10 minus 1 power 49 divided by 5, which will give me 3 minus 1 to the power 49 divided by 5. And minus 1 power 49 is minus 1. Multiplied with 3 gives me minus 3. So my remainder is minus 3. Remainder minus 3 will be equivalent to 5 minus 3, which is 2. Right. And we got the remainder 2 in the previous problem. So this is an easier approach to that. We don't have to do for so many terms, so many times. Right. OK. Another problem we can look at is uh, we need to find out when 9 times 9 is divided by 13. 9 times 9 divided by 13 uh, is basically 10 power 9 minus 1 divided by 13. Now, uh, we can think of 13 minus 3 whole power 9, but we can also think of 1000. Look at 1000. Hmm, 10 power 3 when divided by 13, 13 times 7 is 91, 9, 0, and 7 times 91 gives you the remainder minus 1. And we are okay with minus 1 now. We are okay with negative remainders. That means I can write this as 1000 power 3 minus 1 divided by 13. 1000 is going to give me a negative 1 remainder minus 1 by 13. Minus 1 power 3 is minus 1. This becomes minus 2 by 13. The remainder minus 2 is equivalent to 13 minus 2. And 13 minus 2 is 11. So the remainder will be 11 in this case. Right? Okay. Another one, 67 power 67 plus 67 is divided by 68. All right. So obviously, it's going to be written as 68 plus uh, 68 minus 1. Just a second. So 67 can be written as 68 minus 1 power 67 plus 67 to be divided by 68, right? This whole thing will be divisible. So I can write it as minus 1 power 67 plus 67 by 68. The power is negative. So this becomes 67 minus 1 by 68, right? Minus 1 plus 67 divided by 68. That is 66. 66 by 68, so the remainder will be 66. Okay. We need to find out the remainder when 2 power 100 plus 3 power 100 plus 4 power 100 plus 5 power 100 is divided by 7. So before applying the divisibility idea that we just learned to all of the terms individually, look at this. 4 and 5. 4 can be written as 7 minus 3. 5 can be written as 7 minus 2. So let's utilize that idea. We have 2 power 100 plus 3 power 100 plus 7 minus 3 power 100 plus 7 minus 2 power 100. And we are dividing it by 7. When I'll divide it by 7, this th these terms will go away. And you'll be left with 2 power 100 plus 3 power 100 plus minus 3 power 100 as the remainder and minus 2 power 100 as the remainder divided by 7. Now because the power is even, this negative sign doesn't matter and I can write it as 2 times 2 power 100 plus 3 power 100 to be divided by 7. Now you need to think of the closest power of 2 and 3 which is a multiple of 7. I think of 8, which can be written as 7 plus 1, and 27, which can be written as 28 minus 1, right? But for that, the power 100 will not do. I need to have the power which is a multiple of 3, so I can convert it into 2 cube and 3 cube. So using that idea, I'm going to write this as 2, 2 times 2 to the power 99, plus 3 times 3 to the power 99, 
divided by 7, hmm. which I am going to write it as 2, 8 power 33 plus 3 times 27 power 33, 2 be divided by 7, which becomes 2, 2 times 7 plus 1 power 33, 28 minus 1 power 33 divided by 7. Now look, this will be divisible by 7 and leave the remainder 1. This leaves a remainder minus 1. So finally, you will be having 2 times 2 into 1 plus 3 into minus 1 by 7. This is 2 times 2 minus 3, which is minus 2. So this is minus 2 by 7. And this remainder is equal to 7 minus 2, 7 minus 2, which is 5. So this whole thing, when divided by 7, is going to give you the remainder 5. All right. A very unique way to deal with this problem, right? OK. So we understood uh, how to use binomial theorem to find out remainders when something to the very large power is divided by a number. I hope you find it helpful and I hope this is going to save you a lot of time in whenever you are attempting these kind of questions. Thank you. Thank you.